topic of this week's lab is projectile motion. Projectile motion refers to anything moving only under the influence of gravity. But why should you care? Well, say if you want to talk to someone up in the balcony and you want to throw a rock at the window, well, you need projectile motion for that. Or if you see an enemy boat somewhere and you want to shoot a cannonball at them, that's, you need projectile motion for that. Or if you want to look really cool and make a daring escape by jumping off a cliff, you also need projectile motion. So, it's a very essential skill if you want to be a pirate. Or even if you're not a pirate, hopefully you'll find many cases in your everyday life where that would apply. So, the projectile motion, put this very simply, is to describe the motion of something as it flies through the air. It rests on two basic assumptions. Uh, one, the acceleration due to gravity in the vertical direction is fairly constant, meaning you're not traveling very far above the surface of the Earth, so say you're not a satellite. And also that the acceleration in the horizontal direction is fairly minimal, very close to zero, meaning that mostly that air resistance isn't going to be a big factor. In our lab, we'll be using a solid steel ball, which is fairly heavy and fairly rounded shape, so air resistance is not going to pay, play a big part, and the assumption should hold. The key to analyzing projectile motion rests on the idea that what happens in the horizontal direction is independent from what happens in the vertical direction. What that means is no matter what speed we're going at in the horizontal direction, it should still take the same amount of time to fall through the same amount of distance. Here's a quick comparison between the two cases where I have a initial horizontal velocity so you see a parabolic arc coming down, and one where I just let the ball go straight down. In these cases, it takes, it does in fact take them the same amount of time to hit the floor. And we'll see it one more time in slow motion from the bottom. So hopefully that's convincing enough for you. So the purpose of this week's lab is that we'll use our equation to predict where a ball is going to land and then we'll actually measure that distance to make sure that our equations work. So now let's take a look at the setup itself. And this is the setup. You've got basically a little ramp with a nail so that you can release consistently. And then you have two photo gates which are, which are set up so that you can measure the horizontal speed a bunch of times. And then you let it drop. But before we do that, we want to make sure that as we drop, our piece of paper actually fits. So we'll and it does. So that, now that we're happy with it, we use some weights to weight down the paper so it doesn't slide around and affect our measurement. And we'll take a pump rod to mark out where the beginning of the fall is. And here, depending on how stable the pump bob is, you might have to, um, instead of using a very fine dot, you might have to do a little circle to reflect the uncertainty in the measurement. And then placing a car piece of carbon paper roughly where it's supposed to land, and you drop it about three, four times. So that you get a sense of the uncertainty as well. So you get a blob and a starting circle, measuring the distance between them, and you check that against your actual prediction. Um, do read through your lab manual that has all the detailed steps in it, but that's the general idea. Good luck.